In today's video, we're talking about silver dressings, when they help, when they don't, and how to avoid common mistakes. Silver sounds powerful, right? It kills bacteria, it's in burn creams, it's even used in catheters. But here's the truth. Silver isn't always helpful, and when it's used wrong, it could slow healing down. For those who don't know me, my name is Dr. Voltaire. I've treated hundreds of wounds, and I've seen silver save the day and also be totally unnecessary or even harmful. If you're trying to choose the right dressing and feel overwhelmed by all the options, this video will make it simple. Clear tips, real talk. We'll cover what silver does, the types of wounds it could, it's good for, when to stop using it, and what to use instead. And I'll share one case where silver actually caused more harm than good. Stick around for a checklist you can use tomorrow. Let's start with the basics. Silver is an antimicrobial. It kills bacteria by damaging their walls and interrupting their growth. That sounds like a win, right? And in many ways, it is. Silver has been used in wound care for centuries. Even before modern antibiotics, silver was used to prevent infection in open wounds and burns. Today, you'll find it in many wound dressings, foams, hydrofibers, alginates, and creams. But here's the catch. Silver doesn't know when to stop. It's not targeted. It kills bacteria, yes, but it can also damage the new healthy cells that are trying to build a fresh layer of tissue, the very cells you need for healing. So let's break this down with a simple rule. Silver is great when bacteria are the problem, but harmful when healing has already started. Let me tell you about Mrs. L. She had a venous leg ulcer. It was draining heavily and had a strong odor. The staff started her on silver foam dressings. In the first week, good results. Less odor, less sloth. But then they just kept going. Week two, week three, week four. No one stopped to reassess. By week six, the wound was dry. The edges were rolled in and she started complaining of discomfort. The wound had gone from infected to stalled and the silver was partly to blame. Here's how you know when silver might be right. Ask yourself, does the wound smell bad? Is there a yellow sloth or visible purulent material? Is the wound painful or getting larger? Has it stopped improving for two weeks? If yes, silver might help, but only for a short time, maybe one to two weeks, then reassess. If the wound is cleaner and showing signs of healing, it's time to switch. Now let's talk about the different types of silver dressings you might see. Silver foam is great for wounds with a lot of drainage. Silver hydrofiber works well for deep or tunneling wounds. Silver alginate can help when there's bleeding or heavy exudate. And silver creams are mostly for burns, not great for chronic wounds. But no matter the type, silver shouldn't be used forever. And here's something a lot of people don't realize. Silver dressings don't mix well with santal. Santal is an enzymatic debriding agent. It breaks down dead tissue using collagenase. Silver can deactivate activate that enzyme. That means the santal you're applying might not work at all if there's silver in the dressing or base layer. So if you're using santal, avoid silver. Pick a dressing that lets it do its job. Let me tell you about another patient. Mr. A had a pressure injury on his sacrum. It looked red, inflamed, and he had a fever. The team added a silver hydrofiber dressing and also sent wound cultures. Two days later, the fever was gone with antibiotics and the wound looked better, but they didn't stop the silver. They kept going for three more weeks. Eventually, the wound dried out and began to stall. Granulation tissue slowed down. The moisture balance was off. We stopped the silver and switched to a simple silicone foam dressing with a light hydrogel. 10 days later, the wound looked pink and active again. That's the power of listening to the wound. Healing isn't about doing more. It's about doing the right thing at the right time and knowing when to stop. So here's your checklist for silver. Use silver if the wound smells, has sloth, or looks infected. Stop using silver if the wound is clean, pink, or starting to granulate. Reassess after seven to 14 days. Don't mix with santal, it won't work properly. And here's a pro tip, document your reason. Write something like starting silver dressing for odor and suspected bio burden will reassess in seven days. That way you're showing intention, not just habit. We all wanna do the right thing, but in wound care, sometimes doing less at the right time is smarter than doing more. Silver isn't bad, it's just often overused. So use it like a spotlight, bright focus, short not like a flashlight left on for weeks. Remember Mrs. L? Her wound started healing again only after we stopped the silver. It wasn't more dressings that helped. It was letting the body do its thing with the right support. Thanks for watching. If this video helped you think differently about silver, check out my next video on maggot therapy, another strange but powerful tool. Stay informed and heal well.